Hello there everybody, my name is Kiyomi Pyeom Pyeom but you can call me Kiki. I wanted to do a video today to show everyone more about me and what I am passionate about. But please mind if I mess up some words or sound shy, I'm just very nervous. Um, but as you may already know, I am a bunny, but there are actually several types of breeds of rabbits out there. Here's a fun fact for you. According to the Australian Rabbits Breeders Association, there is a recognised 49 different breeds of rabbits altogether. But in this video, I will be talking about a few of the common breeds of rabbits kept as pets. As well as this, I will pair it with a really dumb photo of each. This will accentuate the features that are used to characterise each breed. They range in size, shape, fur type, colour, and so on, which is mainly what I'll be outlining today, as well as place of origin, of course. But please always remember they must be socialised and enriched properly, so they will give you love and spend time with you. No matter the breed, give them lots of love and attention, so they'll become your best friend. Now onto the most popular breeds. In no particular order, I will be showing you the most common rabbits that are kept as pets in Australia. This is also backed up by studies and my own personal experience. So, the first rabbit breed that I will be speaking about today is the Mini Lop Bunny, which is actually half of the Pion Pion's family hybrid. The Mini Lop originated in Germany when a German Lop was bred with a small chinchilla rabbit. Due to the distinct parent breeds, the Mini Lop has quite a unique look, mixing that fluffiness and rounded look of a chinchilla with the rabbit features of a German Lop. Due to the fact that they were bred selectively, they actually are a relatively new breed of rabbit. The Mini Lop has a compact body type and is among the smaller rabbit breeds. An adult Mini Lop should weigh anywhere from roughly 1.5 kilos to just below 3 kilos, which is really, really small. And regardless of their puffy size, they also share a signature circular body type. They're like little floofy balls of joy. <laughs> the body is massive and thick despite its relatively small size. They can be surprisingly muscular and well-rounded, and some even have a dewlap which I suppose is like um, this vertically hanging flap of skin below the neck. This is a great way to spot a female mother bunny. As the name of the breed suggests, the rounded and well fed ears sit loppingly vertically on the sides of the head. They almost look like pigtails, kind of like my ears. So, moving on from the mini lop bunny rabbit, I will be speaking about the Dutch rabbit. So the Dutch rabbit is one of the most oldest domestic rabbit breeds. Because of this, they love to be outside and running around, feeling some soft grass under their fuzzy feet or digging in the dirt to play. They are notoriously social and love interacting with their outside environments, as well as their owners. Being a good owner and socialising with your rabbit will ultimately be the thing that makes or breaks your relationship. And because of their sociability, if they spend too much time alone in their enclosure, they may become depressed and bored, especially without a friend with them to interact with. The Dutch rabbit is also known for its markings and unique colours. These bunnies all have dark coloured ears and rumps, a band of white from the top of their shoulders to their belly, white legs and a wedge of fur running up the front of their face, really cutely. <laughs> they usually weigh around two pounds and have a compact body and short erect ears. If you want a bunny that kind of acts like a dog, a Dutch bunny is the best option. Now you have the extremely floofy lion head rabbits. So, the lion head rabbit is a relatively new rabbit breed. It's known in the vet industry as a more fancy breed of rabbit. They are small bunnies with compact rounded bodies. And I guess the distinguishing factor of course between lion head bunnies and the other breeds is that they have this floofy woolly mane. When I get a lion head rabbit in at the vet, the owners are usually pretty snobby, um, but the majority of rabbit owners are really lovely in general. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so lion heads were created in Belgium by crossing two different dwarf sized rabbits. Vets can't really figure this one out, like exactly what breeds of dwarf sized rabbits were used. Um, it's most commonly theorised though that the Swiss Fox and the, Dem and the Netherland dwarf breeds were bred together though. Here is where it gets super cool and interesting. As they were selectively breeding these rabbits, a gene mutation is called the main gene occurred which essentially means that they have this gene that causes them to have a line of wool around their heads, hence the name lion head. And I know people will joke about me saying this, but the lion head requires a lot more grooming. They were really messy. But to compensate for this, they are actually very tolerable and docile with young children. Although I don't recommend getting a young child a pet rabbit ever. And I can talk about this in a further video. 
Now you have the big boy rabbits, the biggest rabbit breed in the world, the Flemish giant. They can measure up to be bigger than a medium sized dog and weigh up to roughly 11 to 14 pounds, which is really massive for a rabbit. They are characterized by their dense, short fur and of course their size. Oh, on a side note, there are different types of rabbit fur um, and it's characterized into three groups. You have the typical rabbit fur, the rex and the satin fur types. So 37 of the 49 recognized breeds have typical rabbit fur. Correct fur length ranges from each breed. The thing that keeps them all the same though and causes this to be a group is that in every teeny little hair follicle of the rabbit, counting guard hairs as well as the undercoat, they all contain up to 14 hairs in each follicle. As the length itself varies though, you can create subcategories for typical rabbit fur. And this all depends on the behavior of the fur when you put it into contact. For example, different densities can cause flyback fur, which is relatively self-explanatory. When the rabbit is pet and the fur immediately flies back, that's when it's called flyback fur. Or on the latter, there is rollback fur, meaning that when the fur rolls back, when the bunny is pet, it's called rollback fur. I don't know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but now moving on, you have the Rex type rabbit fur. So assuming that we have established that typical rabbit fur contains roughly 14 hairs in each follicle, well, the Rex type contains up to 50 in each follicle. Rex bunnies are currently categorized with their weight and height differences. Um, the Virgin Mini Rex is no match. <laughs> the Virgin Mini Rex is no match for the Chad Common Rex, as the Common Rex has up to four and a half pounds extra worth of fur thickness. But the quality of fur is statistically better in the Mini Rex types, so they do better in that department. Um, okay, sorry, the ramble's almost over. But lastly, you have satin fur, which is prevalent in the Angora breeds. Um, this is popularly used for wool. Satin fur is characterized by the narrower diameter of the hair shaft and somewhat clear. When the two factors are combined in, it strengthens the concentration of the shade. As well as this, this makes the hair shaft transparent. Um, I apologize for going completely off topic there. Um, yeah, but my point was that Flemish giants have short fur. The Flemish giants are thought to have originally been used for their fur and meat production. However, it has been since discerned that due to their large bone density, the meat to bone ratio is not the most ideal prospect available for meat production. So now years on, they are primarily kept as pets and showmanship animals. They're known for being easygoing and intelligent. They have big brains and can be trained relatively easy and well too. And also a fun fact, rabbits have an 190 degree field of vision. The final breed of rabbit is a Pionpion. Pionpions are rabbit-human hybrids. I'm sure you've seen my little bunny tail in my ears. I also have a bunny-like appetite. I love veggies, especially carrots of course. But please remember that there's a misconception with fruits and vegetables and rabbits. Um, I can quickly explain it now before the video ends, I guess. Uh, so rabbits have extremely sensitive digestive systems. Digestive illnesses are common in rabbits and can be fatal if they're not dealt with super quickly. So it's super important to be careful about the food that you give your rabbit so it can live a long and healthy life. A well percentage of the rabbit's food should be taken up by hay. Similarly to most rodents, rabbit's teeth are constantly growing. So having a good amount of tough food, especially hay, which they eat the most, will help the rabbit's teeth wear down. As well as this, a couple times a week, they should be fed various types of grains such as spinach, parsley, and any Asian greens. This is beneficial to give the rabbits an extra boost of nutrients. And on special occasions, treats are yummy. I personally love them. They have different varieties of treats, most of them involving hay and a bit of fruit. Um, having treats is important, especially for enrichment purposes. As well as this, on very, very special occasions, a piece of fruit such as an apple, a banana, and strawberries is really yummy and exciting to eat. If I eat too much sugar though, I can get a tummy ache. A very big spike of glucose happens, which could really hurt my stomach. Um, so yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is that the whole meme of a bunny just eating carrots is dumb and inaccurate. And if you ever get a bunny, please make sure to take my advice. Please remember though that you can always DM me for advice on bunny killing tips. I'm really lonely and I'm always happy to help. I can talk to bunnies after all. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and my autism rant. I guess um, I'm sorry that like I've been, some parts aren't gonna be perfect, but I'm trying my best. Thank you everyone for watching my journey. <laughs>